Write it down. Two weeks from today, October 20th, Coach Brian Mintz will be coming. Did he tell you? Kids just don't tell you anything. Yeah. Uh, Coach Brian Mintz will be here sharing the gospel with us, and uh, I encourage you to invite a friend to come here. Uh, may, may share some uh, uh, about his uh, ministry that uh, God has placed him in. Uh, it was interesting, uh, Coach Lyle Darnell, a legendary coach from Glencoe, uh, Brian saw him lately, and Coach Darnell says, you know, boy, you ought to be coaching. And uh, to which Brian replied, well, not so sure about that. And you know, I think Brian was right. Because I think Brian is exactly where God wants him to be. And I think he's going to share with you some good news. Uh, you know, one of the discouraging things about Christianity today, Christianity today uh, is the small number of conversions, professions of faith that we have in Christianity. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm a little bit envious in a good way uh, of Brian and his ministry because he's been able to experience over the last several months dozens if not hundreds of conversions and high school athletes giving their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, I'm going to tell you what, that's big. That is really big. And, and, and I'm proud of Brian and what he's doing and making a difference in the lives of young people today. That's all I'm going to say. Amen. I think we ought to clap for Brian. Now, it ain't about building Brian up. Brian's just doing what God's leading him to do. And he'll tell you that too. And, and I, But I'm proud of him. Boy, man, I'm happy for him. Boy, I tell you. So he's going to come and share. So I, and that's two weeks from today. <clears throat> okay. I read earlier from Proverbs and, and, and you know the first six verses tells you a lot about what Proverbs is about. What it's for. Uh, verse 7 is, is basically the theme of Proverbs, concise to uh, the first half of it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I've read this to you before, and I read it most every time just because it just says it very succinctly and it says it exactly. What is fear of the Lord exactly? What does it mean? Here's what it means. A loving reverence for God that includes submission to his lordship, and to the commands of his word. God is our king, but even as we stand in awe of him, we can rejoice. It's loving reverence to God. It's not being scared of him. I think a lot of, the, a lot of times we grow up, I know I did, I know I've heard people say they grow up hearing that fire and brimstone preaching. There's nothing in the world wrong with that. But you just grow up being scared of God, being afraid of Him. That's not what it's about. It's about a loving relationship that you have. That is what the fear of the Lord is. And uh, as, as I grow older, I have a, a very distinct appreciation for that relationship that I have with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that I have with God Almighty. You know, just, just a few pages back here in Isaiah, and I'm, I'm over in Isaiah chapter 11, you know, just, just a few, three or four pages back, Isaiah is talking about seeing the Lord. He's having a vision. It says, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of His robe filled the temple. Now, there's a song 
that talks about that. I don't remember the name of it. I know some of you have sung it many times. But, that, but that's, that's, a, that's an image that I have of God. Sitting in heaven, wherever that is, on that beautiful throne, with his robe flowing, just a majestic scene. Uh, nothing that I'm afraid of. So, we move over to Isaiah 11. The first five verses here I wanted to share a little bit with you and then uh, after I share for just a few minutes uh, we're going to we're going to get up and we're moving to the fellowship hall and we're going to gather around the table sit next to one another and we're going to do holy communion because today is World Communion Sunday. And, and I would imagine that there are tens or hundreds of millions of other Christians today that are doing the same thing. Can't give you a real number. I just give you my usual number. It's, it's a bunch. A bunch of folks are doing it today. You know, and, and there's something to be said for that. Because Scripture tells us that God calls for us to be unified. To live in unity with one another. One God, one Savior, one Spirit, one church, one body, one Savior. So today, we're going to join the rest of the Christian world for the most part. And, and we're going to celebrate in community uh, the Lord's Supper. It'll be very informal, nothing to be worried about. It'll be similar to what we're, the way we did it the other day, by intention, but we're going to serve one another, sitting table side, like a family. But I, I want to share with you just a few words from Isaiah. Isaiah here is talking about Jesus talking about the Messiah to come. It says in verse 1, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse from the roots of a branch will bear his fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and power, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of of the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes I get a little bit confused. Not maybe confused is not the right word, but you know, the whole idea of God coming down to earth and walking here and living among the, among us as a man is just a little bit hard to wrap my head around. But Nonetheless, that's exactly what happened. God was here in the form of Jesus, in the form of a man, flesh and blood, felt the same things that we feel, love, pain, excitement. Fully God and fully man. Says the Spirit of God will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in that fear of the Lord as a man here on earth. Then it goes on to talk about Jesus and says he will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. I'm going to tell you something that, that came to mind here. Yeah. You know, it, it, this, this, just, this scripture really sets Jesus apart. You know, when I think about that, what does that mean? 
he will not judge by, by what he sees with his eyes. Well, how many times have you ever heard the term, well, I saw it with my own two eyes? You know, normally you can take the saying, seeing is believing to heart. But maybe not all of There was a... Uh, I may get in trouble for saying this, but this is one of the stories that really came to my mind. Mary Jean was working here in town. She went to lunch. And one of the things that Mary Jean hates in this world, one of the worst things she hates is eating alone. So she goes to Subway. And she goes in there and she buys her a little sub and turns around. And a good friend of ours, a married friend of ours, looked at her and says, Well, hey, Mary Jean. Why don't you come sit with me? So Mary Jean goes over there and sits and has lunch with her. So you can imagine somebody that came in there and knows Mary Jean and me and sees Mary Jean eating with this good-looking man with a beard and uh, you know, so you know, maybe they say, "Well, they may, might need to pick up the phone and call me." He says, "Hey, you know what your wife's doing?" But you know what? What I left out of that story is this was a, a very good friend of ours, married for forty plus years to his wife, been the music director at a church here in town for over 40 years. A uh, man who I would trust with my wife or my kids or my grandkids. So, seeing is not always believing. Can't always judge by what you see. You know, and, and Jesus has the perfect knowledge. He has that knowledge of the Holy Spirit. He has that discernment of the Holy Spirit. Something that, that we could grasp a hold of maybe a little bit more. And it says in the last part of that verse, or decide by what they hear in their ears. How many times have you ever talked to someone, maybe picked up a phone, and the first words out of, their mouth, out of their mouth says, hey, you know, I'm not trying to gossip, but. Hey, I'm not trying to spread rumors, but. You ever heard that? But I'm going to tell you, as a pastor, and really, anybody. You should just stop them right there. Stop right there. I don't want to hear no more. Because not always what you hear is the reality of what it is. And it goes on to say, But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decision for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. In verse 5, Isaiah says of Jesus, Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. You know, that's a reference Paul used later, talking about the full armor of God. See, back in the day, they wore these tunics, these flowing robes, these loose-fitting garments, you know, because it's so hot over there that whenever they had any kind of activity to do, they'd tie them up and wrap them up around them where it'd be closer to their body where they could move and not snag or get caught. I ask us, uh, do we wrap our belt of righteousness around our bodies every day when we get up and get dressed. For ladies, do you take that sash or, 
or those other things that you wrap around you? Do you take that sash of faithfulness around us? Well, that's what Jesus is all about. And th this is a great description of who Jesus was. Now, I, I don't know about you, when, 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 I, when I read all these things uh, Isaiah is using to describe Jesus, I think about myself, and I think about how many times I fall short of all that. How many times have I seen something with my own eyes and made a judgment about it? How many times have I heard that gossip that didn't stop and just listened to it? Because it was sensational. Wow, man, I can't believe that. And I hear those stories and then all of a sudden I start forming judgments in my mind. You know, I think, golly, man, I need to pray for those folks. Boy, they're, they're going down the wrong road. You know, I think we all need more of the Spirit in our lives. We need to be more like Jesus. We need that Spirit to rest on us, like Isaiah said. We need that Spirit of wisdom and understanding in our lives as we deal with one another. We need that Spirit of counsel and of power that comes with the Holy Spirit. We need that Spirit of knowledge understanding and we especially need that that fear of the Lord in our hearts constantly continually day and night we need to have that loving reverence for God not out of guilt or obligation but out of love because that's why Jesus came you know we've talked about that before here recently. You know, he left this perfect, wonderful place to come down here and, and walk around the desert of Palestine and deal with people for 33 years. And we saw where that ended up. 